What's up you guys? This week we've got another bug type for you, but don't worry, this one actually does things. To contrast the stalwart wall that was Shuckle, today's episode is Heracross, the single horn Pokemon. What a weird designation for a Pokedex entry. I have memories of Heracross from my early days in Pokemon Crystal, where headbutting trees in Azalea Town led to an early game monster that proceeded to destroy everything it faced, with stats way too good for where I was in the game. It really makes you happy Bugsy didn't have one, although sure, Scyther was still pretty good. But we're were those stats enough to carry Heracross into the upper echelons of competitive play? Let's find out. As I always say, every single video. Since I just talked about Heracross's stats, let's go over them. The immediate standout is its base 125 attack, which is absurd. In Gen 2, that's tied for third highest overall, and is tied for first among all non-evolved Pokemon alongside Pinsir. In fact, Pinsir and Heracross were designed as semi-counterparts, despite being a generation apart. They share the same base stat total of 500, but it's where those stats go that matters. While Pinsir may have a great defense of 100, it died quickly to special attacks due to its low special defense and HP. Heracross trades in some physical bulk, to beef up those two stats and lost some special attack in comparison, which really isn't a loss at all considering that both of its stabs, fighting and bug, were all physical in Gen 2. That slight shift makes all the difference with better overall bulk, Heracross is able to survive and wreak havoc. While maybe its stats aren't all the difference, Heracross also had access to Megahorn, the strongest bug type move in the game, while Pinsir had to be content with Hidden Power Bug. With that comparison out of the way, let's talk about what Heracross actually did in Gen 2. It was, as many other Pokemon were by the latter half of the metagame, a rest talk user. With dual attacking moves of Mega Horn and Earthquake, Heracross could hit the majority of the Pokemon population with some bug type justice and bought Poison and Steel types who resisted it with Earthquake. This made it a powerful check to some of the premier threats in Gen 2, like Curse Machamp and Needle King, provided they weren't running Fire Blast. Of course, that set only exacerbated Heracross's biggest weakness flying types. Birds like Skarmory and Zapdos resisted or flat out evaded both of Heracross's attacking moves and absolutely destroyed it by targeting its 4 times weakness to flying. Drill Peck from either of those Pokemon easily one hit KOs the beetle. Heracross sometimes ran Hidden Power Rock or Seismic Toss to deal with those Pokemon, but it was acknowledging that you were still gonna die afterwards. If Heracross was the Seismic Toss variant, then certain poison types with fire moves like Gengar and the aforementioned Needle King could tank it effectively and respond in kind. But it all came down to whether it was running Earthquake or not, and if it was the Megahorn Earthquake set, nothing really wanted to tank those hits. Heracross's sheer power combined with its survivability from Rest Talk and its overall good stats landed it comfortably in the A tier of Nintendo Cup and then later in the overuse in Smogin meta. It was slow, but man did it hurt. Gen 3 brought Heracross a veritable Christmas wish list of tools. What was once a fairly linear Pokemon suddenly had numerous options for sets due to its expanded move pool, an amazing ability, and several great items for it to abuse. First, Heracross got Guts, making it burn proof. With Guts, Heracross's Rest Talk set got even better. It was allowed to run leftovers for even more recovery because being asleep actually boosted its attack power even higher, and with new coverage moves in Brick Break and Rock Slide, it was far more unpredictable. With all that said though and considering that sleep talk to rest doesn't heal you up to full, that wasn't even Heracross's most popular set. The item it really took advantage of in the advanced meta was Choice Ban. Heracross's already huge attack became boosted to disgusting levels when banded. It was always threatening because in addition to Megahorn for a stupidly strong stab move, it also had Focus Punch, an effectively based 225 attack that made switching out a potential death sentence for whatever unfortunate Pokemon would pop out of that Pokeball. Focus Punch could 2 hit KO its old nemesis Skarmory, and even a Guts boost it could even one hit KO Skarmory. Rock Slide was a staple for coverage on Pokemon like Gyarados, Salamence, and Gengar that resisted its stabs, but the last slot was largely variable. Facade could do 70% to even Weezing after being status. Sleep Talk meant Heracross could switch in on a potential narcotic meant for another Pokemon, and drastically change the tide of the battle, though admittedly you would never want to willingly put your Pokemon to sleep as you have less control, but the point is it's still an option. An HP Ghosts and Brick Break could be run for reliable coverage instead of counting on Megahorn and Focus Punch. Past that intimidating set, Heracross still had a lot of options. Sword Dance gave it access to a whole list of ways to pull off a sweep. There was a vanilla Sword Dance set, but it was slow. Select various sets with either Endure and Reversal or Substitute remedied Heracross's mediocre speed and took advantage of its other ability, Swarm, to boost its bug type attack specifically even higher. It also had the possibility of running bulk up, 
as if it didn't have enough options already. So if Heracross is so great, what was it weak to? Well, with its lackluster speed, Heracross sometimes had a hard time actually switching in, unlike the other sweepers in the tier like Salamence, Titar, and Metagross. Speaking of Salamence, its flying type and access to Intimidate meant it could actually switch in on Heracross already deployed, something Gyarados could do as well, although both had to be careful of Rock Slide. We've already mentioned Weezing and Skarmory, who under normal conditions can do all right, but Weezing had to be sure not to will o -Wisp Heracross, and Skarmory could still take a considerable amount of damage. Really, that's true of everything Heracross faced. No matter what, it could heavily dent even its best checks depending on the set. We said it was slow but wreck stuff last gen, and guess what? That was even more true in this generation, and Heracross was one of the most terrifying physical attackers in Gen 3 overused. In Gen 4, it was really choice Scarf that defined Heracross, for better and for worse. Heracross still had as many sets as ever, including a fun spin on its Rest Talk set that also utilized Bulk Up to make a Mega Horn spamming machine. But Choice Scarf was a guaranteed patch for its biggest problem, its speed. Of course, that meant a drop in power since it wouldn't have the boost from Band, Sword Dance, or Guts. So Scarf Heracross was mostly used for revenge killing. Lucky for Hera, it got upgrades to two of its coverage moves in the form of Close Combat and Stone Edge, ensuring it still had a good amount of power. This Heracross would frequently be used on teams that had status bait Pokemon like Metagross or Swampert. If you thought you were going to be burning or poisoning an important threat and ended up facing down a very angry Guts boosted Beetle instead, you were in for a rude awakening. The final slot on this set was variable. Night Slash to deal with its ever prevalent ghost problem. Sleep Talk to switch into sleep as always, and most interestingly, sometimes toxic. Since this Heracross didn't quite have the raw power its other sets did, being able to cripple walls through status was sometimes a better option. While Choice Band became less popular because Heracross simply couldn't keep up in speed, Heracross's Sword Dance set acknowledged their drop in speed and went for even more power, utilizing Flame Orb and Toxic Orb to boost their attack immediately with Guts. Bulk Up also became more prevalent, simply since Heracross's low speed was starting to be more and more of a problem point. That low Low speed is what really gave it a hard time this generation. With everything faster and running Choice Scarf, Heracross was easily revenge killed itself. The list of things that resisted the stabs just got longer. In addition to old threats like Zapdos, Gengar, and Gyarados, Dragonite, the Rotoms, and Gliscor all gave it huge problems as well. Heracross could, as always, create massive damage with proper prediction, but if you guessed wrong, Choice variants were a sitting duck. And even if it wasn't choice, its low speed guaranteed certain speedy fire and psychic types could always eliminate it before it had a chance to do anything. Finally, it was simply outclassed by Caesar, who was not only the best bug type in Gen 4, but one of the best Pokemon, period. As with many Pokemon we've seen who have raw power but also a host of other problems, Heracross ended up in Borderline. Its attacking prowess was just too much for underuse, but it was hard to make work in overuse. We've talked before about how Gen 5 was a great gen for fighting types, but that wasn't quite true for Heracross. It did get some fun new things, like its new ability Moxie, which gives you a plus one attack if you land a KO on your opponent's Pokemon. This let it potentially boost up even with the Choice Scarf for the potential to sweep. Guts was still a good option, but it was less reliable and more dangerous if you needed the boost. Other options were still there. Flame Orb, Choice Band, and even Sub Moxie, but it always came down to Heracross's speed issues. Other good, faster fighting types in this generation outclassed it, and its list of checks just keeps getting longer. Landers T was the biggest culprit this generation, who even took neutral damage from Stone Edge and shrugged it off. Jellicent could also pose problems to sets without Night Slash, and the amount of things that packed both the speed and the power to dispatch Heracross was actually quite large by this point. Scarf Jirachi, Tornadus, Volcarona, there's a lot. With the odds stacked up against it, Heracross finally dropped to underuse, where, of course, it was one of the most common threats. Heracross wasn't used much overall in VGC by a good amount of players, but it was actually used in all three years of Gen 5 VGC by player Steven Morioka, so we have a decent understanding of how it worked, even though it was considered unconventional. Heracross has a number of things that work well for VGC. For one, it resists Earthquake, meaning it can viably be used as a partner for that move, and it packs Earthquake of its own and Rock Slide as spread moves. Though fondly enough, Steven Morioka used a Bug Gem set for extra power from Mega Horns to take out threats like Cresselia, other Psychic types, and Amoongus. As for the powerhouse of Tyranitar, Heracross is a fighting type, so that's pretty self-explanatory. But it could also be used with status orbs. Guts is a great ability for VGC 
in general to absorb status, and with more accessible support in the form of Trick Room or Tailwind, Heracross had room to make use of its destructive power. Its counters are the same as usual and are part of an ever-growing list. Flying types are of course the major culprits, with Zapdos being a huge nuisance in particular. But Faster Fire and Psychic types also destroyed Heracross, whose bulk at this point was still okay, but not nearly as impressive as it once had been. If you needed a fighting type, there were faster ones like Terrakion, or ones that could take hits like Conkeldur, and of course, Hitmontop, thanks to Intimidate. With everything becoming so much faster, Heracross really needed a miracle to keep it from sliding down the tiers. But luckily, it got one in the form of its Mega Evolution. In exchange for just 10 points of speed, Mega Heracross got a base 115 defense stat, 105 special defense, and an astronomical base 180. 85 attack stat. Holy moly. That's even more than Deoxys attack and Mega Rayquaza. In fact, its attack stat is second only to Mega Mewtwo X. With its Mega Evolution, Mega Heracross also got a nifty new ability that completely changes its playstyle. Skill Link guarantees that every multi-hit move will hit its max amount of times. Suddenly, Pin Missile is a base 125 move that also breaks Substitute, which now in a majority of situations is better than Mega Horn. And it doesn't end there. With Rock Blast and Bullet Seed, Mega Heracross had ample options to use its ability. As for a fighting type stab, Close Combat is still strong AF. What's more, its bulk and its Mega Form is really quite good, so it can Tank hits from threats like Bishark, Megalopony, and Weavile, and then threaten to boost with either Substitute or Sword Dance, both of which would most likely cause a sinking feeling in your opponent's stomach. If it switched into a choice attacker and resisted the move, that was the cue for it to start wreaking havoc. Unfortunately, it was weak to a bunch of common offensive types. Flying, Fire, Fairy, and Psychic. There are a lot of Pokemon that can outspeed it and kill it, like Talonflame, Bellatis, Mega Deante, Charizard, and as ever, it hates things that resist its stats, like most Pokemon do. So Gliscar and Landorus T are as big a threat as always. With all that said though, it has 185 attack and an amazing ability, so yeah, it's overused. VGC Gen 6 Mega Heracross is again pretty damn unconventional. It's a physical threat matched by very little when it has speed control like Trick Room, Tailwind, or Paralysis support, and is able to take out Mega Kangaskhan even at minus one. It is also capable of one-hit KOing a huge portion of the metagame. With that said, it's very susceptible to burn since it loses its guts ability upon Mega Evolving, it doesn't do anything to Aegislash. Slash, Intimidators are very rampant, and there's a certain priority Brave Bird spamming user that ruins Mega Heracross's day. No point for guessing who. So again, you can't deny that attack stat, but it was still considered unconventional, and was still used but not used by a lot of players. And that's it, so how good was Heracross actually? Honestly, it was pretty good. Despite playing pretty linearly for the first few gens, its amazing stabs and base stats just couldn't be ignored. It actually had access to a wide range of sets in Gen 3, by far its highest point, that made it a hard to prepare for threat that could wreck unsuspecting teams. While its mess speed kept it down in later gens as the metas got faster, its mega form let it come back basically because it just doubled down on everything Heracross already had. Great bulk and great attack to the point where its speed stat, though it was an annoyance, there were decent workarounds for it. Man, that was a long one, but thanks so much for watching, and of course, if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and of course, comment on which Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.